Yeah, then start it. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining Dev Days on Inventor 2021. Myself, Chandrasekhar. I'm a developer, technical consultant for Inventory API. Today, we are talking about uh, what's new in the Inventory API. So in the upcoming Inventor 2020 release, we have improved many API area. The four major area fall under path, drawing, and assembly document areas, plus a number of new generic APIs. Here's a summary, and we'll take a look at the specifics later. The great news about the, this release of Inventor is that we continue to improve based on customer requests. For example, in Inventor 2021, we have even more API improvements than we had in the prior 2020 release. So here is the list of generic APIs which are considered for improvements in Inventor 2021. In the upcoming slides, each API will be, will be discussed in detail. So this is our first API we are going to discuss under general API, which is auto find errors after manual prepare property. On enabling this, it finds error automatically even after manual repair. When users are dealing with the commonly used components like iPad factory or standard parts, it requires to save these files in library folders. So enabling this option allows to save the files in library folders implicitly. Please note that after saving the files in library folders, files cannot be modified via inventory API. So while saving the files in library folders, there are seven different prompts and seven de default conditions are considered to control all seven prompts and default seven default conditions respective default default to save properties and seven pros, seven prompt save properties are introduced in, in inventor 2021 api so to show the my home on startup this api is helps helped in introduced in inventor 2021 New allow custom values properties allows us to set and get whether to allow the custom values for a parameter. On enabling this property, custom values are numbers with multiple units can be added into a multi-value parameter. In theme manager object, there are two new improvements. One is to get active theme and another one is to set the theme to either lighter or light or darker. So new VFrame object is introduced in Inventor 2021, which allows us to specify the location and size of the VFrame. Imported RVT component object allows us to import Revit component into Inventor data. So there was a request from a customer who wants to set the angle precision and length precision in measured tools. Finally, it is implemented in Inventor 2021. Along with that, along with the setting precision, angle precision and length precision can also be retrieved. So another new method called get identical bodies is introduced to identify the identical bodies in transient BREP object. So the existing export method is extended to extract tables from iAssembly factory, iPod factory, parameter table, positional representation, and iFeature table into external files like Excel, text file, etc. 
So there are three file mass, file formats have been removed in Inventor 21 API, namely base base three format, base four format, and Microsoft Access format. So in the early versions, dates were written with time. Now it is simplified to return only date in the format YYY, MM and date DD format. So we next move on to our next topic that is pod document API. So here is the list, list of APIs which are considered to Im implement under pod document API idea. So this is a one more customer request to implement methods to create all clearance inf info and, all, and also setting the clearance info for a whole feature. So this is actually a modification uh, to add a silhouette curve. Uh, now new methods, uh, new method called add silhouette has been exposed. Along with that silhouette curved body and exclude faces, exclude internal faces properties have been improved, implemented. And early, earlier versions uh, methods, add method and faces or body property are and include coincident silhouettes properties have been removed in order to be consistent with the UI calculation algorithm. So new update while creating a flange definition. Expose the expose the flange angle reference property to specify flange angle using a face or a work plane. So in in 3D sketch, new project to serve curve curve project to serve curve surface curve object is implemented to project the curve onto a surface. This object is also allowed to edit and delete the projected curve. This is an interesting property where you, you can get the range box of a surface body as well. So earlier it was only available for the pod, pod body or occurrence, component occurrence or assembly. So now it is exposed to our surface body as well. In addition to the method, in addition to the set, set body seat method, it is extended to set the surface body should, to seat metal even though the computation or error exists. So there are a second method for a set body sheet metal which allows us to accept the, accept the body to seat metal style even though computational error exists. So in, in unwrapped result alignment enum, there were only two enums. One is origin and XY plane. Now, additionally, in this inventor, inventor 2021 API, XZ plane and YZ plane have been added. Now, next move on to assembly document APIs. Here's only one API is considered for improvement. That is replace function. So the replace function is enhanced to save the edits and keep the adaptivity after replacing the comp even though even after replacing the components. Next we move on to our drawing document APIs. So here is a list of APIs related to drawing document which are enhanced in inventory 2021 APIs. So there are two new properties added to the drawing view object. One is to get the associate of associate of drawing view API, whether it is associated or not. And another one is to get the associated view of the drawing view. So in the earlier versions, there was a property called active design view rep representation was useful to get the 
uh, uh, associated view of the drawing view. Now it is it has been removed. So these two properties have been introduced. So new uh, new method a uh, new method called new property called sheet format uh, sheet format dot fit views to sheet is is added in Inventor Twenty One PPI. What it does, you know, this while adding to a sheet format to into a sheet, we can say that whether the added sheet should fit the sheet uh, added added drawing view should be fit within the sheet or not. So here is the sample code of how the uh, how can how we can specify the fit views to sit property. So new new dimension type enum is added, which is you know we can add a, we can mention the diametrical dimension in a parallel. So. So it supports the parallel dimensions, di parallel diameter dimension. So there is one more uh, add linear method is introduced to support new dimension type like uh, align to curve dimension type and normal to curve dimension type, which allow to specify align alignment geometry to rotate the dimension alignment. So here we have a new object called sketch hatch regions to create a sketch sketch hatch in a document in drawing document. This is the first time it is introduced in Inventor 2021. And in, in drawing sketch edit mode, closed profile can be used to assign sketch origin. So Here's the units format units formatting object is exposed to query or edit the units format for whole table column. This is again a one more request from a customer who wants to change the who wants to replace the styles in within the styles within within the styles editor. So replace styles is the method which allows us to replace the drawing styles. So here is the description property which allows us to get and set the description for a set sketch block definitions. Before we wrap up the inventor updates, I want to remind everyone that four design automation version three came online last year. In addition to AutoCAD, Revit, Rig 3DX Max, Inventor is also exposed to support here. If people are automated already for Inventor, the design automation stack may help you to manage and more efficiently run those objects. It also supports plugin and all logic automations. Any, any questions? So just what switch them up? The next topic please yes so sham will be presenting uh, for uh, fusion uh, hi guys so shall i start please please, please share yeah, my screen so, um, sham please share the screen yeah i'm doing that yeah thank you Yeah, thanks, Shikhar. So it was a nice presentation. So uh, hi, guys. I am Sham Sundar Goel. Uh, 
I'm working as principal engineer and uh, for Fusion and uh, right now working as a technical leader for Fusion API engineering team. Uh, I'm co-presenting this with the Sajit, uh, who is from the ADN team. So moving to the next slide. Uh, so as the part of the Fusion September release, uh, we updated the IDE. Uh, previously, we were using the Spider as the IDE for the Python uh, add-in development on the Fusion API. So based on the customer feedback, we replaced that with the Visual Studio code. Uh, in September release. So it comes uh, like uh, uh, Visual Studio code is uh, probably liked by the community, uh, Python community a lot. So based on the feedback received, uh, we updated the uh, ID from the spider to the VS code. Uh, uh, moving to the next slide. Uh, as a part of the same uh, update, uh, we also updated the Python version. So previously Fusion was coming up with a version 3.5.3, uh, but as the part of the September release, we updated our Python version. So it comes with there some benefits, like there are some security concerns with earlier version of the Python. And uh, uh, there were some SSL related issues as well. So Python 3.53 was not supporting the TLS 1.1. So uh, we updated that and these problems are addressed but it comes with some implications. So Python 3.7.3 is stricter and it, re it, lead in, it uh, leads to the problem where the old add-ins might not work without making some certain code changes uh, due to the migration. Uh, so add-ins need to take this action uh, in case if it is not working. Uh, so moving to the next slide, uh, these are the few issues we have outlined. Like for example, in the earlier version, you can have the try accept block uh, without any uh, code there, but 3.7.3 does not support that. So you need to include the pass statement there. So there is a link provided for the blog uh, at the bottom where we have outlined some of the issues uh, which were noticed and which can help to do the migration from the 3.5.3 to 3.7.3. Uh, moving to the next slide, uh, new UI. So you must have noticed that the Fusion UI is updated and we moved away from the old UI to this new tab toolbar API, uh, UI, where in the same workspace, you can switch between the tabs. So in previous version of the Fusion, if I need to go to the surface workspace, I need to use this design, like this workspace switcher. Uh, but we come up with this new uh, UI uh, so where you can switch, remain, with the remaining in the same workspace, you can switch between the tabs. So you can move from the solid tab to the surface tab or the sheet metal tab. Now to update the API uh, so that uh, add-ins can add a new tab into an existing workspace, we provided the few APIs. Uh, so here's the list of the API, uh, like toolbar tab activate, delete me, is active, is native, uh, and the add. So it is similar to the panel. So for example, if I want to add a panel into a workspace, uh, so based on the same thing, you can add a tab now. So first you can use the add, uh, add tab uh, uh, to add a new tab into an existing workspace. Uh, you can check that whether it is the native tab. Uh, native tab means like which comes with the Fusion product itself. Uh, so to distinguish between the add in added tab and the Fusion UI native tabs. You can use the is active tab to know that whether a current, which is the, if your current tab is the active one or not. You can delete the tabs which are added by the add-ins and you can activate the tab. It's more like switching between the tabs. Uh, along with that, we added an API uh, which allow the add-ins to get the uh, public link of a design, uh, which is available in the side panel. So it's more like the functionality in the Fusion where you can right click on a file in the side panel and get the public link. So the same thing is available through the add-ins. So it will uh, 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 expose some, allow the add-ins to uh, come up with some good workflows. So moving to the next slide. So this is the slide which probably we need to pay attention to that. 
like we are uh, going to uh, remove the javascript support so if you uh, know that like uh, uh, in the earlier version of the fusion we were supporting the three languages fusion uh, c++ python and the javascript and uh, we uh, decided to not to support the javascript and but if there are the some existing add-ins they are still they can still work with the existing fusion uh, but uh, now the job that support is going away so it is recommended like if there are the some add-ins which are built on the fusion javascript api to consider to migrate to the c++ or the python api we are probably going to start the communication regarding that to the add-ins which are available on the fusion app store or for which we have the some way to communicate uh, but this is something to pay the attention uh, I think with this, we are at the end of uh, the Fusion API. Any question you guys would like to uh, ask? Yeah. Thank you. I, I don't see any questions. Uh, however, uh, at any point of time, you're free, free, you're free to ask. OK, uh, I can see a question. Uh, which version of python in code is supported yeah so right now we are supporting 3.7.3 okay so, so the comment is the latest version is not supported is that the latest version uh no actually i think the latest version uh, they are the, uh, the other version of the python but this is not the latest uh, yeah, so right now Fusion is supporting 3.7, uh, but there are the other versions of the Python available. Okay. Any more questions? I don't see any other question. Uh, having said that, feel free to ask the question. We will relay it at the end of the session. Uh, Sajit, the next one. Uh, yes, thanks, Viru, and thanks, Sham. We have uh, Jeffrey and Paul uh, from the Vault Engineering team. Uh, they'll guide you through the uh, what's new in Vault API. Sajit, uh, I will go ahead and share my screen. Yes, please. Yeah, we can see the presentation. You can see it? Yes. yes, Jeffrey. Perfect. All right. So thank you all for joining. Um, we're going to be presenting the Vault 2021 API enhancements that we have for this year. Um, we do have a few fairly large updates that we want to highlight, and we also have some miscellaneous changes. So jumping right in, uh, we do have a new web service for this year. We have an analytics web service. And the analytics web service is um, supporting duplicate search functionality. And if you haven't been exposed to that previously, it finds geometrically identical shapes inside of a vault. So first, I want to kind of break down the UI so you can see which of the new properties and class members relate to which information you would see on the UI. Starting from the top, we have the duplicate file count. And the duplicate file count is the number of duplicates that have been determined from the number of files that have already been indexed for whether or not they're uh, duplicates. And to the right of that, we have a duplicate file groups count. And that breaks down the duplicate file count further into how many of those that were found are truly unique shapes. On the bottom left, you'll see the indexed file count. And that indexed file count is of all of the files that you've selected to be indexed for duplicate determinations, uh, how many of those have actually been processed. 
and to the right is the candidate file counts, and that's how many files can be processed from your current folder configurations, which areas you've selected for duplicate search to operate in. And all the way on the very right is the vaulted file count, and that's just a total count of all the files that you have inside your vault currently. And all of these, uh, they fall inside of the duplicate search snapshot class. And we have one more that wasn't covered on the previous slide, which is the extension property. And that's just simply saying for this snapshot, which file extension was processed. So next, this is the settings panel for duplicate search. We have a few API values that are also related to this. On the top, we have a checkbox, which is determining is enabled. And in the middle, we have folder path, which determines folder ID for the folder configurations, and an array of those folder configurations as a whole. So the is enabled Boolean falls inside of duplicate search status. And the status also contains the snapshot information that you would have for uh, running the duplicate search. It'll also tell you if you have any failed indexed jobs and if any folders are configured for your current search. And these are more background implementations. They're kind of calculated for you um, in, on the fly. And then we have a duplicate search folder configuration, which is pretty simplistic. The only thing exposed there is a folder ID. And an array of those duplicate search folder configurations are used in a duplicate search configuration object, which basically tells you what is the scope of which folders you're using for indexing. And again, we have another enabled Boolean that's the same as the is enabled, but in a separate class. So we also have a few new methods to support the analytics service. We have the get duplicate search configuration, which will return that configuration we saw previously. And we can also set it with a new config if we see uh, that it's fitting. And to get the search status, which contains that snapshot data that we saw before, which is really the bulk of the operation, uh, we can call get duplicate search status. So we also have some more web service updates, not really new web service layers. And those are to the change order service. So we did remove one of our existing methods, get email body by change order ID, and that was replaced by some new functionality. The new functionality makes it a little more of a detailed class implementation for the emails. So this one is kind of straightforward. We have the subject and body properties. And then we also have some new properties, the CO prop def ID array, item prop def ID array, and file prop def ID array. And those are the property definition IDs of any uh, properties that you want to include in your e email. And most of those fall inside of the change order email template class. And then when you go to submit your change order, you can also see an email uh, dialog as well. And that also has a subject and body class. Or I'm sorry, subject and, pro and body property. And that falls inside of the email message class. So again, we have some background methods that you can use to get and set these. We have a get default email template, and that will just return the vault system generated uh, email template, return it back to uh, how it was out of the box. And then we also have the get email template, which returns our new customized template if it's set. And these will return the change order email template class. 
Um, we also have a save email template, which contains all of the uh, properties that we need for the change order email template class, the subject body, and all of the prop def IDs. And we also have get email message by change order ID, which as it implies, gets an email message for a given change order ID. And this actually replaces the method that we had removed pro uh, in the previous slides. We also have a few miscellaneous changes that don't really fall into any specific category, but are good to know. We have a new exposed property on the roles class called sysname, and this value is immutable. This kind of came about as uh, an update that we made to allow unique background colors for administrators. And we also have a new method for the job service uh, called resubmit job, and that allows you to resubmit jobs from vaults other than where they were originally submitted from. We also have an update to an enumeration for file classification. We have a new design presentation value, and this helps us better identify inventor presentation files more accurately within the vaults. So next we wanna to go to the highlighted feature updates that we have for this release. We have new download permissions available within the client. Uh, if you open any of the files or folders and take a look at the security details, you should see a new column called download that you can either allow, deny, or leave blank. And in order to set that with the API, we've updated which ID values are accepted for the access permiss. Um, we have a new value of four as allow download and you can either set that to true or false within the API. Going alongside this update, we also have a vault download denied exception for the new clients that, that will be thrown. And for the legacy clients, they'll simply get a restriction 8,000. So what the new permission does is, as it implies, it allows user uh, vault administrators to restrict um, which users can download certain files from the vaults. And how it'll affect existing vaults when you do the upgrade, what it'll do is it'll use the existing read permissions to set the values for the download permissions so that we don't break any existing workflows. We also have some purge enhancements that we've done. Uh, we've included a new checkbox in the lifecycle definition UI that uh, basically says if we want to include existing file versions when we change the control states. Um, we can apply purge restriction options to history with the API, it's so long as we give a lifecycle state ID. And what it does is it kind of goes through and retroactively sets the control bits, if you choose, on existing uh, iterations. Before how it worked is it would set that control bit from your current iteration and everything moving forward rather than on historical as well. And after you set this value, nothing will happen to the files immediately unless you choose to purge afterwards. And that wraps up the vault updates for 2021. Are there any questions? No questions still now. Alrighty. Thank you. Sajit, Kevin, any, any suggestions, anything which you want to communicate? No, nothing from my side. I'm good. Thanks. 
Yeah, nothing from my side either. Just thanks a lot for attending. And, um, you know, you can always follow up with any questions later, too. Just let us know. Thank you. Anything else you want to present, Sajit? Uh, no, we do. We are okay. pretty much done, yeah. Yeah, so final couple of minutes for any questions, any doubts you have. Uh, this is recorded, so we will be placing this in uh, uh, ADN portal so that you can get the recording. Uh, once the press embargo is released, we will be posting this to YouTube so that everyone can see this video. For now, I'm just stopping the recording and we will be live for another two minutes.